Hello and welcome back. We got another Tucson here sitting in front of me, and yet again we got another rattlesnake. This one uh, I haven't really had as long as probably some of the other ones, but I've definitely uh, given it quite its uh, ins and outs and everything like that. This is the TS-205 dash drop, because uh, this is the drop point version instead of the, uh, the Tonto version that is uh, the exact same model here. This is, uh, well, it's a titanium integral frame lock. However, it, this is built a little bit differently than um, some other titanium integrals out there. And the fact that uh, this thing essentially is a flat sheet of titanium that they've basically done milling on both sides of. And then, in this particular instance, carved out a ton of the top there, uh, and kind of, with heat, folded it over like a taco. Uh, and in that particular case, you can see, yeah, they're, they're not perfect. They, uh, <laughs> they're a little bit uneven, but uh, they definitely make sure that they fit and match up nice and tight over at the, uh, the pivot side there. Um, the other kind of elephant in the room with this is, uh, this gigantic channel that just has the blade there getting ready to just lay you open like a Thanksgiving turkey. Um, I, <laughs> uh, I enjoy this knife to look at. Uh, I don't necessarily like to carry it because, uh, yeah, you reach in there and, uh, well, you have this channel that basically invites your pinky to uh, basically just flay it, just completely open. So uh, this one, I think, was done a little bit more for aesthetics than it was for uh, anything else, unfortunately. The pocket clip is actually implemented quite nice on this, though. Um, it's got a nice wide contact patch on there, so it's pretty easy to get in and out of the pocket, which, you know, that's... Definitely fantastic. Uh, it does come in contact with the uh, with the frame lock there, but it doesn't um, force it down because it's also resting on there, so you don't have a, a problem that you would have from like uh, the SE Avispa or something like that, where the pocket clip actually forces against the uh, lock bar and makes it really difficult to uh, close. <laughs> So yeah, I have not taken this thing apart yet, so I will definitely do that here. So y'all can uh, suffer with me through that. And we are just shy of three and a quarter inches here. However, nice four finger grip, so at least it's uh, decently comfortable when you're uh, holding this guy. And uh, I really do like the uh, the blade shape design on it. You know, it does come down to a decent um, thinness uh, right behind the shoulder there. Not quite sure off the top of my head what the uh, blade stock thickness is on this guy, though. So uh, how about if we go ahead and investigate with the Calipalulus. Four millimeters. All right. Well, it looks thinner than that, but uh, that's what it's telling me. So, <laughs> all right. I might as well get me some uh, other measurements as well. This is, uh, yeah, just a smidge thinner than the uh, the PM2. Speaking of which, if I didn't do that already, because I don't remember if I did or not, but uh, I'll go ahead and do some uh, size comparisons. There's the, uh, the Benchmade 940 Spyderco PM2. Move those out the way, and then get uh, more budget offerings out there with the, uh, the Rat one, which uh, is definitely larger than. And... There we go. There's the uh, the K-Bar Dozier, which is actually surprisingly about the same length. Just a little bit less as far as the blade goes. 
but this handle is a little bit taller. So there's all of that. So, all right, it is now time for me to find out how to uh, take this thing apart. Uh, it does not look like I have absolutely any reason to take that pocket clip off, so I will not do so. And just go ahead and go for the, uh, the top pivot here. I can pull that out. Shove the pivot out through that side and pull some things out and hey we got different uh bearings here they are uh, brass caged instead of uh nylon caged but otherwise basically the same here and those guys look to uh kind of sandwich in there a little bit so they're uh inset both on um the uh titanium handle as well as uh, on the blade itself here. I do kind of want to uh, just clean this up a touch. So I'll knock some Vita games off my shelf while I grab myself a little uh, Q-tip. There we go. So yeah, definitely interesting that uh, they decided to use uh, brass bearings on there. It does look like we have uh, steel washers on the inside on here. They don't have the uh, the bearing race kind of carved into it, if you will. But uh, yeah, now I'm going to have fun trying to uh, put this darn thing back together. <laughs> do a pinch sort of thing with it while simultaneously trying to not stab my hand with it because I don't particularly want to uh, have my hand stabbed. It's not exactly what I want my tools to do. <laughs> Shove that guy in there and then play around with it a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That wasn't too bad at all, but I've also had experience now um, disassembling and reassembling uh, access lock knives, which uh, probably gives me a lot of um, a lot of practice in that in particular. But uh, yeah, that does seem to go back together quite nice. Super nice, tight lockup. And OK action that will probably break in even more over time. Like I said, these things don't have the uh, little bearing race carved into the uh, the steel washers on the inside here. But yeah, this is a, a, it's a pretty interesting piece. Because, yeah, it's kind of a titanium uh, integral, but it's not milled out of a single piece. Which, hey, that does make it... Um, cheaper to manufacture and uh you know can get it in the hands of more people however um kind of in doing so this and quite a few of their other integrals are done kind of the same way where you don't really have much in the way of a back spacer kind of going on there and um that kind of deters just a little bit from how it structurally feels like usually when you have a titanium integral uh, handle, you're basically expecting it to feel like a, a titanium billet or whatever with a blade that's been kind of shoved in the middle of it. And these don't quite have that. And uh, a lot of that has to do with, um, you know, just a little bit of flex there. Kind of like if you uh, take a normal standard car and decide that uh, you're going to make a, a, a topless version of it, uh, you know, a convertible version of it or whatever, but you don't add any uh, additional strengthening struts or whatever, then, uh, yeah, the car is a little more wobbly than it would otherwise be, just as far as uh, how it feels when you're using it. 
But uh, yeah, pretty much with uh, what this thing can potentially do really easily to your digits. This one is a, a neat piece that I do like having in my collection, but it's not going to find itself into my pockets because, uh, well, I like my fingers in one piece. So uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it kind of seems a little bit like I'm uh, harping a little bit on uh, these rattlesnake designs. And uh, I guess the, the first couple of them here, they're probably not my favorites, but they did come out with quite a few of them, and some of them I have actually liked quite a bit. But yeah, this is basically everything that I got to say here of the uh, TS-205. Uh, as I'd mentioned in the beginning of it, this is the drop point version, but they do have a, a, a Tonto version of it as well. Same exact dimensions, obviously. And uh, you can see, I guess I can mention that here at the end, that uh, we do have a very gradual plunge grind, which means that uh, you can kind of put a little bit of a smile on your uh, blade when you're sharpening it. If you're using it as a tool, really not such a big deal. If you're using it as a, uh, a safe queen kind of thing, it's probably a little bit more of a big deal to you. So there's that. Anyway, I appreciate y'all for watching. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your day. Yo. And please subscribe.